Welcome back to Trumbull Valley. Hey, what's up guys? Irish Turtle here and welcome back to State of Decay 2. So I know it's been a little while since I played the game, uh, but pushing that aside, uh, if you haven't or haven't seen, uh, Trumbull Valley is now been well is now being officially released um, as a fully fledged map in the standard State of Decay 2 uh, game. Now, uh, basically, the idea is that they've said that Trumbull Valley has been released as a fully fledged map rather than being just part of a DLC. And so I thought, you know what, what better way to get sort of, well, get back into doing a little bit of content than doing a base guide video, uh, which a lot of you guys who sort of subscribe to my channel kind of enjoyed, it seemed. So, um, yeah, you might remember this map from a previous base guide video I did. Uh, obviously, it was down here. It was the uh, the T-Rex um, uh, T Rex sort of uh, junction base here. Uh, it was just one base for the entire map. But obviously, they've now gone into uh, the beta version of the, the full release they're doing. Uh, which comes out on the 1st of September, so not long to wait now. And there are actually six new bases across the whole map for you to explore and to kind of take over. So in today's video, as usual, I thought we'd get back into doing the base guide. And so we're going to just start off here right at the Fresh Start home base. Um, obviously, it's night time, as you can see. I've done a little bit of exploring uh, just to kind of get my feet back in. Uh, but we're going to take a look at the first one. Um, just full disclaimer, I am using the Builder Legacy here uh, just so that I've got power so you guys can see what that will do to the base. Um, but yeah, so as we can see here, it, it is a very basic starter base. Um, as far as things go, uh, literally you just have some inbuilt bunk beds, uh, some military cots, you've got your command center, uh, you've got your storage, and you've got your two small outdoor slots. And you also have four parking spots. Uh, so it's not too bad, considering that most of the other base game uh, starting spots only had two uh, for vehicles. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, it's a start base. There's not a whole lot. Uh, we'll have a very quick look over here. Uh, these are obviously the military bunks, uh, which are currently being used. And yeah, that, that is literally it. This this is not a very big base. Uh, it's very much uh, a very simple starter base. Um, but it's nice to see we've got some military influences, which is also something you're going to see for other locations. Uh, there's a lot more military locations because obviously um, this map, uh, the kind of, um, I suppose, the, the plot for it is basically it comes in um, after the DLC that took place here. So we'll notice when we come down here, um, we're going to see some old plague walls that have been destroyed. Um, again, that's part of the DLC. If you've not played that DLC, I'd highly recommend it. It's quite a fun sort of standalone thing to do. You get to build a mega base essentially here. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a fun little DLC, but basically... Behind that, it just means that you'll see that there are certain things on the map um, that have been kind of changed from when the game first came out back in State of K1. Um, so up here again, uh, you may remember you had the rodeo station, um, rodeo area is where the base is. Uh, but obviously, you can see they've now moved that, and the base is now at the Red Talon Daybreak FOB. So you can obviously tell they've moved things around. Obviously, um, sort of the military have come in, set up checkpoints. So it's it's kind of the map has evolved. Uh, not only from State of Decay 1, but also from the DLC itself as well. Um, it's also changed even further um, based on the fact that you've destroyed the plague walls here. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of interesting to see and there's a lot of uh, military gear. Uh, but, yeah, with that being said, uh, obviously we've done the first base, like I say, it's never any big one. Uh, but we're going to jump across now and we're going to go head over to the Pterodactyl uh, Tark, um, uh, which I think I absolutely love, just uh, some of the stuff on it. So we're going to head over there and um, I'll show you guys the base. I will claim it and we'll do sort of a more in-depth tour than I used to do for these videos. Um, and with that being said, I will see you guys when I get over there. All right. And so here we are at Pterodactyl Park, uh, or as you can see here, Jurassic Junction uh, to uh, the rejunction. Uh, again, for, for the joke, uh, for those of you guys that maybe aren't aware, Jurassic Junction was the old base uh, it's basically located here in spencer's mill um you know it's top end of the map uh top right end of the map you go up here this is the forest camp stuff uh where the first game actually started uh you come down here uh the old church is well there you go church of ascension is just there and um the murphy's place is just over here just for reference i guess um but yeah it, it's a base that requires a minimum of five people to unlock um, and when you first get here, uh, there are several locations that you have to unlock. Um, the trailer park beds are destroyed and have to be fixed. The soundproof latrine can't speak. The soundproof latrine is also damaged and has to be fixed. Then the backyard slot there is trash, and one of the roof slots uh, there is also trash. Um, this base itself kind of cool. Um, so we have the outside area here. Uh, obviously, you can see we have the large outdoor slot uh, just here. 
nice and easy to use. Uh, in here, we have the command center, so that's where your radio is. Obviously, uh, to use. Nice little idea. Um, unfortunately, the trailers themselves not usable. They are just stage dressing. Uh, but we have a supply locker here with one of these small, I suppose, technically indoor slots. Technically. I suppose they put it as sheltered. Um, so same same principle. Uh, then we have the soundproof latrine, um, which, uh, you know, I it's an interesting idea, I guess. Um, I Yeah, it's, it's a nice way of using the space. I guess um, and then obviously it says here that we have uh, a spot here for the latrine obviously you can clean it um, you know it it's an interesting idea it, it's kind of suggesting that both of these two trailers are toilets rather than anything else um, and then obviously we have the other side over here um, which is the beds uh, again they don't use the inside of the trailers unfortunately it's just stock outside um, you know and we would not become extinct as a dinosaur. I, I kind of love it a little bit here. Uh, it's different to other bases we've had. And then obviously you have your upper slots here and here. Um, and again, all across the roof. So it's kind of like a two-tiered base in some ways. Uh, it's different to what we've normally seen with a lot of bases. Uh, it's a lot of small slots, unfortunately. Which, uh, you know, in some cases it's a bit annoying. Considering that means you can only have a forge... Uh, an auto shop or a staging area you know you can't kind of mix and match stuff it it's a bit frustrating um if i'm going to be completely honest uh, it does very much limit what you can have at this base at least in that regard um but i like the idea it's different it's something new it's something we've not really seen before at least on the way it's been kind of like the upper and lower obviously we, we had the cargo uh container fort in another map which uh, is similar but not this same open degree but, but i will say that's something that i've noticed on this map just generally there is a lot of um there's a lot of different kind of style bases which i really do like and obviously uh, nearby you have the gun shop um you know we have like i say the old base the old church of ascension base uh the kirkman resident that's that was actually a base from the first game as well uh, i might actually do a separate video just going through the original bases from the original game uh if it's something you guys would be interested in seeing obviously they're not bases you can use but it's kind of like that idea of that history of like what's changed from then uh, it, it'd be interesting especially now considering that we can visit um you know the the rodeo and also the original watchtower base that was up here um but with that being said i again it's uh, basically jurassic junction uh take two <laughs> or jurassic junction two uh, the rejunction uh, again, which I really quite like as a whole. Um, you know, it, it's an interesting idea. The base itself, uh, it's you know, it's quite cool. Obviously, you've got a lot of dinosaur references, things like that. Um, you know, on the whole, it's it's kind of cool. Like I say, it's not your typical kind of base. Um, a lot of them do feel like that here. Um, with that being said, yeah, it's it's a very basic one. Um, obviously. You know, you've got a lot of small stocks to try and fill in there and figure stuff out with. Maybe sort of a hydroponics would do quite well for this location. Um, you know, obviously, maybe having a gun range. Uh, maybe, obviously, you know, you've got a few other things here. A lot of red talon facilities, again, won't fit because they're too small. But you could maybe, maybe if you're going to push it, have the clear relay outside. And then do the sort of a, the watchtower and the workshop, maybe. At a push um you know it, it's an interesting pace there's a lot of space here um i'd probably put that as my infirmary downstairs out of the out of the rain um, but yeah, yeah no generally speaking it's a nice cool base um but with that being said i think we're going to hop over to uh the farmland compound now um or actually saying that i'm thinking i'm actually going up to here to the red talon daybreak fob because that's also a five person base um so i'm going to grab the uh the prestige uh, points required to actually do that and then we'll hop over there and um yeah and we'll uh We'll go from there, really. Not prestige, sorry. Influence, prestige is daybreak. Um, but yeah, I'll grab the influence and we'll go take that one over and uh, give you guys a look. All right, so here we are at the Red Talon Daybreak uh, FOB, uh, which is forward operating, gray. forward operating base. God, I can't speak. Um, so let's take a quick look. As you can see, I've taken it over very quickly. Uh, the base itself, uh, it's very much obviously a Red Talon base. So as you can see here, we create Clio Relay, uh, your ransack Red Talon bunk room, neglected Red Talon workshop, rancid Red Talon office quarters, uh, the built-in watchtower, and you have basically one small slot and one um, one free large slot. I can't speak today. Um, the base itself, pretty cool. It has a Ferris wheel heel. Um, the actual bunk area here, um, you can see it's all a bit kind of destroyed um you know obviously that's kind of part of the the, the location um 
it's interesting. This this location offers something that is very different to other locations, um, and I will show you exactly why in just a second. Um, so, as you can see here, we've got a watchtower, and we need to upgrade it. To upgrade it, it says you need here you need the RZX ultrasonic rangefinder. That itself, uh, obviously, it's very specific to this of this location. Um, and again, it's the same for all of these. So the ransack bed, um, you need to obviously pay for that. That's an, an easy one, but again, it fixes it, so it's decent. Um, we then have the workshop. Uh, again, you need to sort of upgrade it, and so that needs a knowledge of electronics and munitions. Um, and obviously here we have the uh, fixing the plumbing for the uh, office quarters, which needs a compact incinerator. So as you can see, this location itself, uh, to actually get the upgrades themselves, they, they they needs a lot more work than a lot of other places it's not the case if you can just put things in that you want you're kind of sacrificing a lot of stuff here you're going to need an infirmary realistically if you're paying on the hard, the hard difficulties so you've only really got one spot to play about with um and as you can see here the base itself uh it says call chavez for help get it get help repairing the workshop um chavez the former red town operator living nearby offered to help us fix the base um so basically um, that means that you can obviously upgrade it from ransack to just regular, uh, rancid to regular. Basically, the idea here is you speak to Chavez. Now, Chavez himself is a staple thing in this area. Um, as you can see here, he's got his own little camp. Uh, it's the Lonely Soldier is his name. And that'll basically uh, take you to him. I'm going to very quickly just run through the quest myself, just have a very quick look. Um, and obviously, I'll show you guys a few of the details there. Um, but the base itself, again, it's very small. Um, it's obviously, it's a Ford operating base. They're not huge themselves. Um, it's kind of cool in the sense that obviously it's got a lot of red talon gear inside of it um, But yeah, there's a lot more work here involved in getting it fixed up um, But you know you might like that you might not I guess it's completely up to you and also as you may be able to notice uh, I have a red talon shirt now that red talon shirt was actually taken from here when I fixed up one of the uh, the rooms uh, Or sorry cleared out the rubbish rather him on the spots um, So you know, it's kind of cool in that regard you get special shirts for each one uh, each of the bases uh, so it's a nice little extra bonus there just for kind of unlocking each location um, but with that being said you know like I say I'll take a quick look at the mission uh, just to see what I can do if I can do it quickly I'll get it done and sort of show you the results of it uh, if not I'll head over to the next base so you'll probably be able to figure it out by, by the next jump cut what I've done uh, with that being said yeah we'll, we'll hop on to the next thing all right so I just went off and did the mission for um, Chavez uh, basically all it did was get me a new guy called Alan uh, who basically had all the prerequisites to do the upgrade. I just figured I'd do it just to see what it looks like. Um, the mission itself, not very difficult. It's just kind of a, a go here, meet this guy, uh, go off to a quick section to prove yourself, and then, uh, you know, bring him back to your base and, and let him join. Um, and then, obviously, he has all the prerequisites to do everything you need. Um, you know, it's a pretty simple mission. I'm not going to kind of say much about it, really. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, if you're on a harder difficulty mode like Lethal, I imagine it will be a bitch to do. Um, but, you know, when you're playing uh, on the easier difficulties, it's really not that difficult. As long as you've got a decent gun with you, you know, you're not going to struggle. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, it, like I say, it wasn't a difficult mission uh, at all. And um, very quickly, just to give you guys a bit of an idea, uh, this base here is um, literally just a couple of steps away from the, the Let's Go Rodeo, which was the old base uh, from the original game. There's a lot of these uh, tents by food trucks and things like that, um, these old military things. So you're in high chances of getting fairly decent gear, obviously hit and miss depending on getting on sort of luck. Um, but generally speaking, I've had quite decent luck with stuff. It's obviously got 45 cal there. There's a lot of ammo crates on this map. Generally speaking, this map, it'll be great for players who are just looking for guns. Um, you know, obviously, there's tons of guns, there's tons of old like um, buildings and stuff, there's no zombies around so I don't really know why it felt the need to do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice map. Um, obviously I'll take a quick look at the upgraded facility just because it was basically free. Uh, materials obviously not expensive, um, so we'll have a very quick look, about 50 seconds there. Um, but yeah, the base itself uh, obviously has already gone through it all. Uh, it's very simple comparatively to other locations. Um, there is another big theme I've noticed, the bases on this are either really odd um, in the way they're laid out, um, or they're slightly different, or they're like this where they're just they're really compact. Um, obviously, yeah, you can you can upgrade your base and fix them. So I've got three beds there at the moment, but 
it's cramped quarters, so you're already losing morale there. And you can obviously upgrade that to uh, be the refurbished one. So it gives you an extra two beds. That's five, um, obviously, like it's intended to be <laughs> when you first build it. So, you know, simple thing there. Uh, obviously, the uh, office quarters there, they give you an extra two beds because of the sofas. Um, you fix it. You get the morale boost. Uh, pretty simple there. Uh, same, same again here. You upgrade it. You get three active guards, and it reduces your zombie threat. It's... You know, it's it's pretty standard stuff, really. And there we go. So now it's fixed the workshop. It's just a standard Red Talon workshop. Uh, it's well worth it. Uh, but with that being said, I believe the next base we're heading over to uh, is the... F not the Farmland Compound, actually. It's Tranquility Factory first. Um, because that's the next five slot. And um, just to give you a bit of an idea as well, uh, this base here, it took 750 to take over. Uh, this one here took 250. That one obviously takes 500, uh, which is the next base I'm going to. So we're going to head over there and um, we'll give you guys a look. All right. Now we've come to the second of my favorite bases uh, on the map, which is the Tranquility Factory. Now this one uh, is located just here, uh, just near the, near the main town. Uh, obviously, it's that Spencer Miller over here. Um, you've got East uh, Fair, is it East Fairfield? I don't actually know what this is. Uh, you've got the northern northern area here. I don't know what it's called, uh, and it's south south town here. Obviously, there's a lot more main gear here. Uh, this is where you sort of the old plague walls are. There's a lot of military gear here. The army roadblocks uh, at the uh, supply tents. There is a lot of military gear here, weapons. Uh, you're going to find a lot of stuff down here. So this is not a bad base to consider. Uh, very quickly, just going to claim it. Just uh, take it over, just so we've got another base. Uh, so you guys can take a look. And just wait for that to load up. There we go. Cool. And so here we are at the base. Just to give you a very quick overview. Uh, as you can see, it's very cool. Uh, we're going to just uh, very quickly fix these. Uh, just so you can have a look and see. Um, and obviously, we'll get a skin out of that as well. Uh, but as you can see, so the factory has built-in storage at the back. Uh, it has a built-in incinerator. It has a meditation garden. Um, really cool. Obviously, it gives you medical stuff there as well. So it's got a nice little boost. Uh, it's got a few more open slots for you to play about with. Too large, four small. Uh, four car parking spots, which all of these maps seem to have so far. And... Overall, I think this base is just one of the coolest because it's so different. It's just like it's a large warehouse. Um, and so obviously we come in here. Um, I did initially when I first came here uh, think this was a tranquility garden. It's not. It's just decor. Um, but as you can see, you've got this nice big open space in the middle. It, it does kind of feel like the place people would take over. Um, it's been reinforced with iron bars so zombies aren't getting through the windows. Uh, you know, you've got these big sort of uh, corrugated walls here feels very much more like a kind of place you defend uh, obviously we'll go to the back here first of all this is your built-in storage um, as you can see obviously that, that gives you uh, the initial boost there uh, let's just double check so yep so that's 35 on all resources plus 20 on storage uh, for materials ammo and fuel food and meds so you're going to get a lot of space in here a lot of bang for your buck um, and then we obviously we can come out here we have uh, like an upper area which is kind of cool that's where your tranquility garden is um we'll, we'll go to that in just a second uh, but yeah that's that's up there um uh, obviously down here we've got a little barbecue fire pit um <laughs> you know you've got a nice few fairy lights sprinkled around uh we've got the incinerator which is just over here uh obviously you can recycle stuff in here uh i'll show you guys that once it's all fixed up um you've got what is a little like lookout point up here uh to see out the front uh, one of the things I've noticed about this base is that they don't really fend off zombies very well. You've got these big holes here where you can look out and see, uh, but it's not that much of a view, um, just just on the defensive side. Um, you've got your radio just up here, uh, which you can go up to by, by that ladder or up these steps just here. Uh, we have this back section over here. Nothing particular over here. It's just obviously uh, an idle point for some of your characters. Yeah, you make of that what you will. <laughs> And um, unfortunately, to get out to the Tranquility Garden, we do have to go outside. Uh, it is like a separate separate area tacked on, uh, but you can go up the ladder here, and this will take you up to that area. And, well, here you can see you've got your free spot here. Um, sorry, not free spot, your meditation spot, rather, uh, which has like a garden for uh, medicinal herbs. So, again, that's free medicine. Uh, you've got your yoga balls. Um because why not? And you've got a ladder to take you uh, actually outside the base. This is no longer within the safe zone. Uh, so it's something to pay attention to. Obviously, if you want to get in on this side, you can do. You can go on a few uh, quick trip raiding trips over that way uh, back into town. Uh, let's just see how long we got left. Uh, 37 seconds. Yeah, but we'll just we'll chill over here then. We'll wait for the garden to get fixed up. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, again, you'll notice, um, as I've said from the other ones, they're different kind of bases, and they've got lots of different kind of built-in spots that aren't typically what you'd expect. Um, personally, I'm really liking the bases on this map. I think it's a different style of map to play on. Um, I think if you're going to be playing Lethal, it's not a bad map to actually start on, just for the fact that there's so much gear around the map. Obviously, when you're playing in the, in the lethal zones, obviously, um, very much the case that you're going to struggle just because of, obviously, um, you know, limitations there. Um, but there we go. And, oh, that's uh, GG. Uh, obviously, you can see here we are in the beta, so it's a little bit buggy. Um, there we go. So everything's all fi fixed up now. Um, and let's take a look and see what the benefits are. So built-in garden, as I said, plus two meds per day. Uh, plus three morale. You can schedule a break, give everyone morale, uh, or you can med meditate in the garden. And, um, <laughs> and that gives you plus three morale, and it also means you get an extra 50% med, so that's an actually uh, an extra 1.5 onto your total. Um, so again, even better, you don't need to sort of uh, invest in a medical slot, maybe uh, in your outposts, what have you. Um, it gives you a bit more freedom there. And also, it's just a nice looking area. You know, you don't get areas like this on other bases. Um, there's a lot of much more unique stuff here, um, you know, which you can take advantage of. And then uh, we'll just take a quick look here. So here's the incinerator. Um, obviously, just a, a nice little room. Um, and again, we'll take a quick look. Um, so there you go. So you can burn stuff, um, which gives you 25 morale, um, plus 5 max food storage for 30, uh, 31 minutes. So basically, it gives you a bit of extra space. Um, so you just toss all your... You cost toss one of everything away and it gives you an extra five in everything um spare um you know i suppose it's 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 a boon in some degree I, I don't think i'd use it um obviously you can put some mod slots in here um i imagine that'd be sort of uh, you know you could put a generator in here uh obviously you've got to remember again i'm using the builder legacy so i do have power and water to everything uh, just free of charge um but yeah, I mean, I mean, look at this base. It's 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 so different. Um, you know, it's it's not your standard kind of base, which personally I really like. You know, um, like I say, you've got this this huge warehouse. It's not standard practice compared to other bases, but it's different enough that I really do like it. And because of that, I think it's one of those bases that. Like I say, it's my second favourite on the map, and I think I would consider using it a lot more long term, um, just for how different it is. And like I say, you've got that easy access into town uh, either side. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff in town uh, on pretty much any difficulty, um, you know, so you can get a lot of gear out of that. And yeah, I think it's it's worth visiting, it's worth holding on to. Um, and like I say, you've got a, a bit more freedom to kind of mess about with it and change slots um, as opposed to the FOB, which was a bit more limited. Um, with that being said, uh, like I say, here it is on the map. Uh, we're going to hop over now to the eight slot base because it requires a thousand um, uh, points to take over, which obviously uh, I've got 508, so I can very quickly grind that up. Uh, it shouldn't take me too long. Um, and then we'll look at the final base, which is the farmland compound, which is actually a uh, base from the original game uh, being brought through. Um, but yeah, we'll check out Fort Marshall first just because the the cost variance there um and personally i do think the farmland one is the best uh with that being said we're gonna hop across to fort marshall just gonna quickly grab the uh the points for it and uh with that being said yeah we'll, we'll hop over there now okay and so here we are at the second to last base being fort marshall uh as you can see it's pretty much an abandoned military base speaks for itself uh i have already set up as well so you can uh hear that guy's taking out zombies so um Hopefully that won't be a, a mainstay while I'm here. What the hell is she trying to do this with? Nobody told me about mosquitoes. What are you trying to? Are you trying to snipe with Desert Eagle? Okay, let's. Just, there we go. We shall stop doing that now. Um, <laughs> right. So, uh, obviously, this is the main entrance here, uh, just on the uh, northeast side of the base. Uh, obviously, you have your supply locker and your material storage there. Uh, when we come in straight on the left, we have the uh, infirmary. This has to be repaired uh, when you first arrive. Pretty much. All the facilities that are inbuilt here, you have to repair them. They're all in state of disrepair. So uh, let's see. So military clinic, basically, uh, this is equivalent to an infirmary level level two. Um, and you can upgrade it even further for very little cost. Um, and obviously, it adds another treatment bed, uh, an equivalent to an infirmary level three. So you pretty much upgrade it. Well, it's super quick to get the, one of the best infirmaries you can. Uh, we then come over here to uh, the small base slot. Um, obviously, you've got uh, three, sorry, two small slots that are free and two large slots that are free. Obviously, one of these pretty much I would definitely put a staging area into. And then I 
maybe toss up between an auto shop or a forge. Personally, I'd probably go workshop forge, I think is, is kind of what I'd do there. And then for the last one, I'd probably use hydroponics. In fact, I'd use hydroponics just there, uh, mainly because it's, um, it's covered slot, and I feel like it would suit it there, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's up to you, really. Uh, you have the central area here, uh, which is obviously where your radio is. Uh, obviously, the base itself, uh, command center, standard, nothing, nothing special. Um, we then come over to the uh, defensive towers. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, they reduce zombie threat in the area. Um, you can't upgrade them. They are maxiv, uh, max, sorry, max uh, upgraded, so pretty much set up there. And obviously, you can see my team are all up on the, the uh, side sections here shooting, which obviously what is what you can hear. Uh, we then have the inbuilt uh, catering station. So straight off there, you've got a kitchen. Well, you know, there's no no, no unbenefit there. Uh, that's morale, strength, uh, all kinds of different buff, buffs. I can't speak. Buffs uh, for your characters at any point. Can't really complain. Um, we then come across to the latrine. Um, again, it's well used. Give you plus 10 morale boost for 31 minutes. Again, you can't really complain. Uh, we then have uh, the shooting range, which again is XP for shooting, wit, stamina, uh, cost materials. But at the end of the day, you know... It's what you kind of expect from a shooting range. Uh, you've got another free large slot. Then we come around and we have the built-in barracks. Obviously, it's an eight-slot base, so it has to have an eight-slot barracks. You will take a morale penalty for that, just because, obviously, it's a barracks, which people don't like. Um, but, eh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's an eight-slot base. You're going to have that problem pretty much wherever you go. And then, obviously, you have your inbuilt storage. Um, well, sorry, not inbuilt, set-up storage. Um, so the base itself... You know, it's not a huge space. Obviously, it has that 25 storage, uh, but it's not great. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, you know, obviously, the base itself is pretty big. Um, you know, it's a lot of open space. Um, as I kind of said, if you've got a group of friends you want to play, like kind of a military-style playthrough, this probably be your best base to go for. Um, if you have got, you know, the utility stations giving you the power and water, I could see this feasibly being one of the better locations. It's not my favorite personally um but i could see why people would like it it's you know it's pretty much straight located next to all of these different um utility things so you've got army camp you know you've got a fortified fire station you've got the army roadblocks you've got literally uh you know everything and also there is a little mission that kicks off around here i believe from someone you pick up at the fire station who she's now gone over there um but she'll give you like a little bit of backstory in the plague walls if you haven't played the um the dlc Obviously, it's not huge, but it is there just in case, uh, just to give you a little bit of, like, kind of flavour text on what's going on. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a nice location. Like I said, it's not my favourite of all of them, um, but it's pretty good in itself. And, um, yeah, that being said, that's pretty much uh, everything to this base. Uh, we're going to head over, lastly, to the farmland compound. Uh, I will have to farm up a little bit of XP for that, but I'll get that done as quickly as possible. And, um, yeah, we'll hop over there in just a second, and, yeah, I'll see you in a moment. All right, and here we are at the final base, the farmland compound. Now, personally, this is my favourite base uh, of the whole lot, pretty much just for nostalgia reasons, uh, if I'm going to be entirely honest. Um, for those of you guys who might not have played the first game, uh, basically, this walled-off section here, ignoring this barn, uh, was pretty much um, a base in the original game. Uh, obviously, what they've done here is kind of... You can make a go of it here. You know, expand it a little bit, make it a bit bigger. Uh, one of the big problems I found when I um, when you had this base in the original game was that you'd get a lot of zombies uh, spawning in the in the in the little um oh my god I can't think uh, in the in the barn. That's the word I'm looking for, barn. Thank you. Um, so they have kind of fixed that a little bit. Um, I generally I actually really like this base. It's a lot of nostalgia and it's it's actually a pretty cool base. Uh, so I'm just going to grab it here, uh, claim it for my team uh, very quickly there. Obviously, I am sacrificing a lot of shit here, but, um, you know, it's a cool base. Uh, we'll take a quick overview now uh, so you guys can see. So, obviously, within the base uh, we have off the start, we have the refugee clinic uh, that's in the house. We have an inbuilt uh, backyard barbecue pit, and we have a bunkhouse. Uh, so we'll, we'll get those being fixed uh, while I'm chilling out. And, obviously, you have right in livestock um, and some slots. Um, so we're going to take a very quick look through. Uh, obviously, there's the barn. Um, so, um, I suppose we might as well just start right here. What the what the old base was. Um, so as we come through here, obviously uh, we can see here. I am kind of 
where my mouse is now. I'm kind of here. Uh, the command center is literally uh, just here, according to this. Um, although I don't, you know, it's a bit odd. Um, you have to go up here first to use it, which is a little bit annoying, but, you know, I'm not going to begrudge it. Obviously, you can use it through your radial men menu anyway. Uh, this is your... Um, your rotting livestock so you'll clear that out and immediately obviously you get yourself another small outdoor spot uh, inside uh, as you might have guessed it's the infirmary so this is all pretty much set up um, as its own little kind of infirmary area uh, or refugee clinic I suppose as they've called it here um, again um, that's the equivalent to a level 3 infirmary so if you consider um, that Ooh, wrong way there we go uh, if you consider that this uh, Fort Marshall starts with a level 2 this one starts with a level three, which is pretty awesome, to be honest. You've got a lot of indoor space here, um, so you can't really complain. Um, obviously, we come out back, and once I get over the stuff, uh, we have one free small slot and one extra slot, which is obviously uh, clearing out here. Um, oh, actually, nope, that's the backyard. That's the uh, barbecue box. Sorry, I'm getting lost on this map. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit disappointed that... Um, Obviously, we have this large slot, but we don't have use of uh, this one here. Uh, I did initially think that we'd get use of it, but apparently it's not there. It's just kind of storage. I kind of feel like it should be inbuilt storage at the very least. Um, but I guess it is what it is. Um, this is your bunkhouse here. Obviously, it's a bunkhouse. So you can't really go wrong. Uh, it's free inbuilt beds. Uh, again, you might take a morale hit just because you've got a large group in there. Uh, but it is what it is um, and then obviously as you can see here we, uh, we come over to this area and we have three free large slots um, so in theory you could have you know um, you could have your prep area not prep uh, what's it called you could have your um, staging area that's the one you could also have a forge and an auto shop uh, all at once so personally I think that's pretty good to be honest um, you know you could chuck a farm in over by your back your barbecue pit you could maybe Maybe chuck in uh, another farm for extra food or a lounge, get yourself some uh, extra stuff. Maybe, you know, have, um, you know, the, the Siege, the, the Haven device. Um, there's a lot of options here for a lot of stuff. Obviously, you can build your um, specific leader project. You've got enough space for that as well. And then you've got one more small interior spot in the barn. Uh, again, free for whatever you want to use uh, alongside your storage. So, obviously, um, if you come into the base with your backpack on, that's where you need to go to drop off your bags, and this is where you drop off your items. So, as a whole, personally, I really like this one. It it's a great base. Um, there's, there's, there's now there's the nostalgia rather of obviously having the original compound, which you can't really beat. And you've got all this space. You're pretty much slap bang in the middle of the map, so you've got access to everything. Uh, pretty much an easy notice. Uh, obviously, with a car, if you've not got a car. It might struggle, but then again, obviously, it gives you a chance to go everywhere. Uh, here we go. We can see the inbuilt bunks. Uh, we'll just give that a very quick look for you guys. So, uh, six beds um, plus two beds. So, that's, what, eight? But no, I'm two beds short. There we go. I <laughs> did, did think it was a bit odd there. So, I'm, I'm two beds short. So, um, it's a little bit annoying. But if I built a lounge, that'd be an extra two. So, that would cover me off pretty well. Uh, the infirmary, as I said, it's... Damn automatically level three um so you know that's the best kind of uh, medical facility you're gonna get so yeah you can't really do much here so yeah you got three treatment beds uh from just to begin with uh which are there we go <laughs> a bit too quick for it so there's your three initial beds uh you've got a nice indoor area um obviously you can't upgrade this it's it's the best it's going to be you can obviously add some extra mod slots in to try and improve bits and pieces um but I mean, as a whole, you're not going to improve this. It 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 is going to give your guys the best possible boost. Um, kind of a little bit disappointed that they don't count the toilet there as part of it and give you like a latrine bonus. Um, but I mean, look at that. You get plus ten health. Uh, you know, three play treatment beds, passively heals. Uh, it it does everything. Maybe if you had two farms, maybe one for meds, one for food, that would maybe be the trade that you go for. And then we have this lovely little barbecue area, which basically again just a kitchen. Uh, so it's all the bonuses there. Um, yeah, and so like I say, personally, this is probably my favourite. I split this between uh, either the uh, the farm here or the uh, Tranquility Factory, just because 
it's the tranquility factor is so different that i like it um but yeah that's so your quick overview uh hopefully you guys enjoyed the video uh obviously as always i'll have put timestamps in the description uh just to kind of let you guys jump around the video as need be so if you come back and want to just double check the map uh you can always click down there uh there's everything you need just to try and get all the ideas uh with that being said obviously i hope you guys enjoyed uh to try and get this together as quickly as possible uh obviously just a quick disclaimer as well the game uh, that i'm playing is in beta um the new dlc for this map drops on september the 1st so there is potential for it to change in the interim uh obviously don't necessarily see that happening uh, a lot of this is pretty much final product and i am what at the moment four days away um from the release so you know you you guys should see pretty much exactly the same thing um but yeah, obviously let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What what kind of base do you think you guys are going to go for? Which ones do you prefer? Um, like I say, I'm partial to this one, I think, just for the location. Um, but I do also like Tranquility Factory, so I'm, I'm kind of torn at the minute. Um, I'll probably set up here just for this 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 uh, group, uh, just so I can play through the new story of the map. Uh, obviously, the map itself has its own little story going on. It teaches you about the, um, the plague walls, and there's a survivor there who will have some sort of missions relating to that, I imagine. Um, I've got a Cleo Doctor up here, um, and this is actually in the uh, North Lake Tanner. So this is, again, where the first game actually started. I've got some missions up there, so it's going to be fun exploring the map. Um, like I said, if you guys are interested, I'd be more than happy to do a video tour of the uh, bases from the original game, how they all look, uh, what's been happening to them. Obviously, this one, pretty much self-explanatory. It's been expanded. Um, but yeah, with that being said, obviously, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, a like would be greatly appreciated. Um, also, just want to very quickly say a huge, huge thank you uh, to my friend James, uh, whose computer I am actually borrowing very briefly to do this video. Uh, but yeah, as I said, if there's enough of interest uh, in some other videos of State of Decay, I will hop on and borrow it uh, to get those done. Um, for those of you who may be wondering where my content's been, basically, my computer is in a, a very difficult state at the moment. It's not working properly. Um, so I'm borrowing a friend's computer just to, to do these videos very quickly. Um, uh, but in the interim, obviously, uh, as I say, subscribe for more content coming soon. Hopefully, once things get fixed and all replaced uh, in my computer, I'll be back to doing regular stuff. Uh, I don't know when that'll be or how long that'll be, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, that was, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.